especially to my six children. So uh, very quickly, let me just tell you a story about my seventh grade teacher, Mrs. Hill. Uh, when I was in the seventh grade, it seemed like every single day Mrs. Hill would stand on the outside of her classroom and greet all of her students as they come in. And, and so as I was coming in, she stopped me and put her arms around me and allowed the other students to get to their seats. And so she marched me in front of the class and she made this announcement in front of all of my classmates. Perry's a special boy, and he's going to do special things. You know, I've never forgotten that day. I, I, I really have never forgotten Mrs. Hill. Uh, what she said uh, back then has really made an impact on my life. Uh, that, was, uh, that was 40 years ago. So this past summer, I found Mrs. Hill. And um, Mrs. Hill, uh, just an incredible. And I wanted Mrs. Hill to know that I've never forgotten those words. I wanted Mrs. Hill to know that I've never forgotten uh, those days. Um, and I've never forgotten what she said. So I found Mrs. Hill this past summer. And I met uh, she and her husband. Mrs. Hill is 82 years old now. And I wanted Mrs. T uh, Mrs. Hill to know. And so we sat on the back porch and we drank Southern iced tea. It was a great Saturday afternoon. The reason that that day was so special to me is the night before, police officers showed up at my house and arrested my dad. And I was hoping that no one in my little tight black neighborhood saw the police cars in front of my house. So it was embarrassing. And the reason that day still stands out to me is because Mrs. Hill, short, now 82-year-old teacher, said that one day I was going to do something special. Well, a few years ago, uh, the, the reason I tell you that story is because I want to introduce to you this idea. Do all you can while you can. A few years ago, I, my wife and I went to the doctor, the eye doctor, and I won't give you the whole story, but the, the, the doctor walked back into the room and, and gave us the bad news that I was going to lose my sight, and within about, about five years, I would be completely blind. It's almost like someone hit me in the stomach. My whole life seemed like it turned upside down. And I didn't know what to do. As tears kind of welled up in my eyes and I looked at my bride and that was a hard day. A few days I, I knew I had to go tell my children so on a Sunday evening I gather all six of my children around the bedroom and and I had to tell them of the doctor's report. Before I told them the doctor's report I said to them, hey, I want to tell you a quick story. <laughs> when I was a little boy, uh, my mom, especially during the summertime, when I was playing with my buddies and my cousins out in the yard, and, uh, out in the field, you guys are awesome. I, just, I just want, my, I want my, my children to know. And so I told them this story. My mom would stay on the front porch and she would say the same thing every single day. Come in before dark <laughs> every day. And my buddies and I, because we, only knew, we knew we had about 30 or 40 minutes, and we would try to get in all the fun that we can get in before dark. We played marbles. We played freeze tag. If you ever get tagged, you have to stand still until someone come and undo you, right? We would go to the fishing pond. We would try to get in all the fun that we could before dark. And I told my children, before I go blind, what are the things that I can do? What are the things that I can say that will bring healing? Where are the places I can go where you want me to see? While I can, what can we do? 
So do all you can while, while you can. So my oldest son, it was a very emotional night. And uh, my oldest son, uh, Cord, he says, Dad, I want to travel. I want to go to Europe. If you and I can spend some time in Europe and travel, um, he's an artist. And he want me to see the things that he saw just recently, spending time in London. And, and so uh, I want to spend time with him. I'm looking forward to that day. My 13-year-old daughter, Callaway, she's a beautiful singer. Every single day, it seems like, she sings Alicia Keys, her music, every single day. I love to hear her sing. And she said to me, Dad, one day, I just want you to see me sing live on stage. I'm hoping that that would happen this year. My, uh, my son, Canyon, he's 15 now. But when I made this announcement, he says, hey, Dad, one day I'm going to play in, uh, football in high school, and I want you to coach my team. I want you to be a part of the coaching staff. So this past year, I became the receiver coach. And it was a great year. Matter of fact, his last catch of the season, he scored a touchdown. He came running to the sideline, and I was standing there. This is the last game. is in the playoff game, and he put his arms around me. Only he and I knew. And he looked at me, and he says, Dad, what a great season. Do all you can, while you can. My two older daughters, Carson and Kerrigan, when they were little girls, they would play these games with these long, big wedding gowns. <laughs> And they were standing at the top of the staircase, and I was standing at the bottom, and I would pretend that I'm their groom. And they would come marching down the stairs, and I would just hold out my arm. What are the things that I can do? And they told me that, that all I want is for you to see me walk down the aisle when I get married to some knucklehead, right? <laughs> do all you can why you can my little boy at Cambridge you know he just want to be like his dad he's like his dad he's just a gym rat he he plays in the yard all by himself he loves to imagine and I watch him play and especially when it comes to football and he gets in the backyard or front yard and goes out into the field and he goes down say it and he will pretend that the linebacker is blitzing and the free safety is going around. And he goes, check, hike, hike, hike. And I'll watch him play this game. He does it all the time. Hike! And he pretends that the center hiked the ball and he just runs around. That I may see him play. Do all you can while you can. A year ago, my best friend, my college roommate, Jeff Davis, I wanted to say something to him that I've been wanting to tell him for years. And so last year, right before a big game, I called him up a day before and I said, hey, hey, Jeff, there's something I need to say to you. So I'm going to see you. I want to come and talk to you five minutes before kickoff in front of 85,000 people. I'm going to find you on the sideline. I'm, I'm going to come down on the field because there's something I need to say to you. I remember him saying the day before, is everything OK? Are you OK with your eyes? Uh, what's going on? And, and I said, I will tell you tomorrow. And five minutes before game time, right before kickoff, I found Jeff. And I stood. And I put my hand on his shoulders. And I told him, man, you've been a great roommate. You've been the best. You've been the best friend. You've been a best teammate. You're an All-American in my book. Do all you can, while you can. And finally, my dad. My dad. I want you to know, I'm the youngest of seven. And from, as a little boy, and from junior high to high school, and certainly in college, my dad was, it was either about prison or jail. It was either about weekend being drunk or we didn't see him. But there was three burning questions I wanted to ask my dad. <laughs> I remember. 
this is right before he died, and we didn't know he was going to die. He had a heart failure. But, but I, I said to my dad, hey, dad, do you love me? And he goes, son, I love all my children. I said, no, 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 I'm not talking about Wayne. I'm not talking about Brenda. I'm not talking about Eddie. I'm talking about me. I'm your youngest. Here I am with six children. I'm speaking all over the place. And I'm, I'm writing books. And uh, do you love me? I never heard that from you. And tears started running down his face. And he says, I love you, son. I said, are you proud of me? Here I played uh, high school football and All-American at Clemson first round draft pick with the Buffalo Bills and I've been doing all this kind of stuff. I never heard from you. Are you proud of me? And he says, I'm proud. I'm very proud of you. And I said, here's my last question. Will you go tell somebody? <laughs> Anybody. I don't care. <laughs> my, dad got, my dad stood up and he was walking across the street across the street to his neighbor. But when I was a first round draft pick, one of the things I've always wanted to do when I was a little boy, I thought I had a dream of playing in the National Football League. And the first thing I've ever wanted to do was, I wanted to buy my mom a home. You know, that's the dream of most boys. And I wanted to buy her her house. And, and so when I had a chance to uh, be drafted by the Buffalo Bills and I had the money where I wanted to buy my mom a home. If you can imagine what heaven looks like, that's my mom, right? I just love my mom. On the other hand, my dad, because I didn't care much about my dad, he was always drunk on weekends, and, but he, my dad did not like, oh, I better say it this way, he wasn't really fond of white people. <laughs> <laughs> Only came to watch me play at Clemson one time. But he wasn't crazy about white folks. So because I wanted to buy my mama home, and because I wasn't crazy about my dad, and because my dad wasn't crazy about white folks, I bought this house in an all-white neighborhood. Right? <laughs> Thinking that my dad wouldn't show up, but he showed up. So my last question to my dad was, hey, dad, would you go tell someone? And he walked across the street to this neighbor, knocked on the door. He came to the door, and he says, hey, my, my name is Sam Tuttle, and I live across the street. And my neighbor said, I know. I've been waving at you for 15 years. You never, <laughs> you never wave back. And I heard my dad ask for forgiveness. Do all you can, why you can. I heard my dad tell this neighbor how much he loved me and how much he was proud. We didn't know he was going to die. I didn't know he was going to die. But two months before he died, he wrote me this love letter for the fourth grade education. Other than my bride and other than my six children, I don't know if I've ever loved a man like I loved my dad the last eight years of his life. So here's my challenge to you. For some of you, do all you can when it comes to forgiveness. For some of you fathers, do all you can to go see a ball game. For, for your sisters and brothers who do all you can just to get together and make things right. Do all you can. Because this is what I found out the last three years of living this life. I don't know what's going to happen physically with my eyes, but for the last three years, I see more clearly than I've ever seen. I've seen things I have never seen before. So do all you can while you can. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm not going to let you go. I'm going to ask you some questions. So come, come stand. So, um,
I, um, I, 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 can't, I can't let you, uh, you go uh, without asking you a couple of questions. Um, um, first of all, um, you, I, I assume, and I, I was looking in your website, that you do some work with uh, professional athletes. I do. Yeah. What do you, what do you tell a young, um, a young man entering the NFL? What words of advice do you give, um, give that person? I would tell them the same thing I told my children. I remember my children, uh, we were having dinner one day, and I grabbed a football, and I said to my oldest son, hey, what is this football for? What is this football made for? And he said, well, you can throw it. And I said, yeah, you can throw it. And I looked at my daughter and says, of course, says you can throw it. What else can you do with it? And she says, well, you can kick it. Yeah, you can kick it. <laughs> I looked at my other daughter and she said, well, you can catch it. And I said, yeah, your daddy was a receiver, you can catch it. And I took this football and I put it on the kitchen floor and I put my foot on it. And I said, this football is not made to be stood on. But since the fourth mm -hmm. grade, that became my life. And what I tell professional athletes is that, yeah, basketball is great, football is wonderful, but if that's the only thing that's going for you, there's going to come a day where you're going to fall, and it's going to be a hard fall. And so because of that, I spend time uh, spending time with those guys, telling them that it's OK, but it's not the best thing. That's excellent advice. I knew it would be excellent advice. Yeah. Um, um, I'm, um, uh, um, you know, my, I, I was born in New York City. And uh, my dad was, uh, was born in the Lower East Side and raised in the Bronx. So. Yeah. So baseball is our sport, and I'm a Yankees fan. Um, are you? Who's your team now? Uh, when it comes to baseball? No, when it comes to football. Uh, you know, I used to love Dallas. I don't like them now, but I loved them then. Yeah, uh, <laughs> back but, when they were American's team. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. So, <laughs> but um, you know, because I, I got to know a lot of the players around the around the league, it's hard for me to pick out a team. I, obviously, I like uh, the Panthers only because of the friendship. But you know, because of Buffalo, and I love Atlanta uh, because I, you know, I know some folks at Atlanta Falcons. So um, I'm impressed with uh, the Patriots. They are, oh, yeah. I mean, they're a very impressive team. How about that one game where that guy caught the ball on his helmet and when New York beat the Patriots? Oh, that's that's, <laughs> that's easy. Anybody do that. That's a great catch. That's a great catch, by the way. Um, uh, in light of, uh, and this is completely unrehearsed. Um, uh, and, uh, and we have a surprise for you. In light of, uh, of um, your message, in light of doing everything that you can, uh, we have uh, a, a, a surprise for you. And, and if you would uh, come over here and sit in this chair, <laughs> right there, <laughs> right there, um, your daughter Calloway <laughs> is going to uh, sing for you. into your soul and the sorrow that you know will melt away and then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on and you cast your fears aside and you know you can survive so when you feel like hope is gone Look inside you and be strong And you'll finally see the truth That a hero lies in you It's a long road When you face the world alone No one reaches out a hand for you to hold 
you can find love when you search within yourself and the emptiness you felt will disappear here oh. and then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on and you catch your fears aside and you know you can survive so when you feel like hope is gone look inside you and be strong and you finally see the truth that a hero lies in you lord knows dreams are hard to follow but don't let anyone tear them away hold on there will be tomorrow and in time you'll find the way find a way and then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on and you cast your fears aside and you know you can survive so when you feel like hope is gone look inside you and be strong and you finally see the truth that a hero lies in you You guys are awesome. It's beautiful. Thanks, Paul. So Thank you so much. No, that pleasure. means a lot thank to you, me. Sir. Of course. Good thank, you, thank you. Thank you so much. Dad, thank you. Thank you. That is awesome. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks.